Hello, it's Zaman. It is Troll speaking, as always. Today, we are going to talk about better diagnostics, better testing for your API, and better error messaging using C Sharp and domain driven design technique. I will show you first for the motivation perspective, I will show you first the problem related to error messaging, and then I will provide a better solution for error messages you can apply it for your testing diagnostics for your better error message providing in your applications so what are you waiting for let's get started not only in domain drawing design but also in any type of applications it is really important to understand your business first let's focus what we are going to develop in our case we have education platform and for education platform we have lessons okay so for the given lesson we have time range and we have the exact date when this lesson starts i will develop this entity with it is value type the value type is going to be our time range our entity is going to be our lesson okay i'm not going to dive into details of domain driven design but exactly will develop the related entity and value objects for this tutorial the purpose here is to provide a better error messaging better diagnostics rather than implementing domain driven design completely okay so let's right click add new project as always in our domain driven design applications we have a special class lab library this is our uh, education platform okay platform dot domain in this class library we are going to store our uh, domain models we are going to sort of our entities value objects okay let me just remove it i always remove this class okay let's right click at new class and this is going to be our lesson in our education platform we have a lessons okay our lesson object our lesson entity consists from multiple properties i will provide public string name okay this is get because if you don't need set please don't provide the set also you can start from the private my preferable uh starting point is always provide our fields using private and then if we require to provide this information outside of this class to make it public but anyway this is also completely okay for us right now uh this is our uh, lesson description and we have public date only this is our start date okay and we have public time range uh, the lesson time okay this time range is going to be a special value object in our case so let's cut it right click at class okay this is our time range and for the time range i'm going to provide from the constructor we have time only stored and time only and information for the given time range okay cool let's call it like this public time only start and let's specify the values like start to start and of course end to end but the case here is we need some sort of validation of course it is always better to validate our domain models because our domain models should be valid when they create it that's why we are going to throw exception we are going to apply validation rules what type of validation we can apply here of course our start date cannot be less than our end date that's where we are going to apply our current lessons logic okay so that's why i'm going to have you can have a separate project for it it is uh, a better option in your case you can publish it to negative package and use in your multiple projects but for now i'm just going to have special folder called extensions okay and for this extension i'm going to have validation extension validation extensions okay validation extensions great and for the validation extensions i'm going to inherit from uh validation exception inherits from exception and let's provide our base that's completely okay let me just format it a bit 
great and let's make it public this also should be public because when you test your models you should somehow handle this exception from your test library that's why it should be public okay and for the extensions we have static the public static in our case we should be able to compare we should be able to compare our struct type of values okay uh, it can be uh any struct like time only date only double decimal integer byte etc that's why in our case what i'm going to do i'm going to return our t and is greater than or equal okay this is our um, t we are going to compare the same type based informations okay and let's just simply generate it like this we have this value the other value we have string message for now i'm just removing the string message we don't need it okay we have where t i comparable t or you can just simply use i comparable and also making it t struct okay good uh so let's just provide a special factory for our exception private static um, validation exception create exception every time when we provide our um, string message we will throw our new validation exception with message and let's just through our create exception great um t let's just format it here okay value should be greater than or equal i guess for now greater than should be okay greater than this is our second value okay good this is our create exception otherwise we'll return our exact value that's great so uh, let's go back and here we have and equal to is greater than start date that's good our end should be greater than our start time okay this is our special extension method that help us to compare to struct okay cool now let's do in this way i'm just going to construct this information so i need string name i need string description in this case i also need date only information for my date and of course time range for my time great let's set the values here we have name to name okay we have description to description date to date and time to time great so i'm going to implement it i'm going to test it using my unit tests okay so let's right click add new project and we're going to select our x unit test project so let's select it this is going to be our education platform that unit tests okay cool let's create it i'll not focus on uh, the implementing the unit test stuff we'll have a separate tutorial for unit testing right now we are just going to see if everything properly working and what type of problem can wait us at the end okay in our case we have special object called time range and in our time range we have special extension method that will help us to validate our properties and i'm going to test it right now let's add click class and let's call it time range tests okay this is our time range tests let's call it time range tests t 
time range tests great let's make it public and let's provide our fact here we are going to test our construction process when uh, and date is less than start then we should throw exception or you can just call fail constructing object okay in my case i have start for the given time and for the given time you see our end time is less than our start time and i'm going to provide our time range let's add a reference to our time range let's right click add project and this is our domain great let's add quick action great we need our fluent assertion tools nugget package manager package manager console i will have a separate tutorial related to unit testing but right now just focus on the exact time range rather than unit testing stuff so if for our unit tests let's install package fluent assertions let's hit enter great let's add our reference to fluent assertion here we are just checking if we are going to throw argument exception this is not argument exception this is our validation exception okay validation exception and for the validation exception we have here public class validation exception this is our namespace for it let's provide this namespace and great now everything is okay let's just test if things are working or not so let's wait great everything is working and in our case let's see what type of message we will get at the end okay let me go to the implementation and here i'm just going to take my string message equal to provided message okay and let's just throw our message i'm just going to add a breakpoint here let's right click debug and see our message okay let's just okay let's debug and in our case i want to have better messaging for my application here we have message information so you see nine should be greater than ten um, but I'm not able to get the exact field names, the exact variable names in my case, okay? So I just need every time take this information for the validation. Let me just take it, copy, okay? Let's go to our validation and provide with message like this. Great, okay? and i want to specify the message stuff like this we have start here and we have we have end here okay and we have start here let's run it again and see if comparing messages are completely okay they are valid so you see the case here is i want to see my start i want to see my end but when i provide this as an error message i'm just getting their values rather than the field names okay i want to capture the exact expression uh like you can provide just a variable or you can provide any delegates etc you can provide any sort of expression you want just capture this expression from the arguments of your method that's why in dotnet we have color arguments expression okay so let's go to our is greater than what i'm going to do i'm just going to add color argument expression with the name of our field so this is our value this is our argument name so you should provide the exact argument name here so this is going to be our string name okay and you should also provide this default value like this or any type of default value you can provide from here and for the second 
other, the second argument called other, I'm going to provide our color argument expression called other. And you can provide any name like string other name. That's also completely okay. The case here is your color argument expression should now which argument to capture, okay? For capturing the exact argument, you should provide the argument name directly for your color argument expression attribute, okay? Cool. So I'm going to provide this string name here like this name with value should be greater than other name with value other. Okay, let's run this test. In this case, you don't need to provide these values because they are default and system will automatically capture the uh, relevant properties. So in this case, the name will get this value. Okay, and the other name is also going to capture your other. Okay, great. Now let's go to our time range test. This message already changed it and this should fail. Now we have different messages. Of course, it is still throwing validation exception, but in our case, we have two different messages. I want to compare these messages. So let's go for it. So you see the expected message in our case is this, but you see, end with value. This, this end is our argument name. So you are exactly now which value, which attribute, which uh, variable name throws in this case exception. So end with value should be greater than start with value. So you see we have start keyword and keyword. So in our application, we have start variable name and variable name. So it is a uh, better information providing mechanism. It helps us to provide a better error messaging to really easily diagnostic, test our endpoints, test our application models.